Well, David Lynn, it is my privilege to welcome you to 700 Club Canada today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an, it's an honor and I've only heard good things. Well, I've only heard good things about you, my friend. I follow <laughs> you personally. I'm so encouraged by your testimony in our country of Canada. For people who don't know you, you are the founder of Christ Forgiveness Ministries, a church planner, an evangelist in Toronto. You are just rocking the streets with the gospel. And David, I want you to tell people this background of really you're a chaplain, but now like you're a street preacher. Like what led you into street preaching and this outreach ministry that you do in Canada? Well, since I gave my life to the Lord almost about uh, 25 years ago, uh, God just put a passion and fire for the lost. I came from a very broken background, was on the streets, in gangs, uh, even found myself in prison at one point as a teenager. And uh, I just knew uh, from from the start that God uh, uh, was going to use me to reach out to people and wanted me to just be an impact in the community. And that's the same fire that's been burning for the last 25 years. And that's what fuels me, just the call of God on my life. And, um, you know, uh, I was actually uh, uh, an associate pastor since uh, 2000 in two different churches before Christ Forgiveness Ministry was formed in 2005. And uh, the CFM, the Christ Forgiveness, is, is more about igniting the body of Christ to authentic biblical Christianity, not just staying in the four walls, uh, making actual disciples, uh, you know, impacting the community on the streets, going into the inner cities in a radical, bold, but loving way. And that's what we've been doing. And we've been seeing a harvest and fruit. And we've been seeing uh, a lot of people ignited uh, around the world. Well, I think that's the key word, ignited. I mean, I think, honestly, you've ignited me. When I watch you and your team, it's not just the evangelistic outreach that you do, but you're discipling people. Like, you guys are committed to the full experience of the gospel in everyone's life and just getting, really, can I just say, getting believers, you know, up off their couches and let's get moving. And I watched you, my friend, uh, you know, go through some really kind of serious opposition in the streets. Tell us a little bit about what happened in Vancouver and when you were sharing the gospel and, boy, you took some heat out there. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we went there and we always go out on the streets to seek and save the lost. And I guess the Vancouver community, uh, you know, I guess either they found out that I was coming and certain members of the Vancouver, not everybody, but certain members of the community just, I guess, didn't didn't like, I guess, uh, the message of the gospel. And when we got on the streets, every time we went out, we were always confronted by a particular uh, segment of the Vancouver, a very small segment, but uh, it, you know they made a big noise, um, and all the media started blacklisting me, calling me all sorts of things that were not true, um, and followed me to the point that uh, when we were actually doing our baptisms, um, a little away from uh, one particular community, uh, they just, I guess about 300 of them just uh, came around and tried to stop us from our baptism. And uh, But uh, the Lord gave us grace to continue on and just go forth. And surprisingly, uh, <laughs> the police force came around to ensure that we had the freedoms to baptize people. And it, it, it's really sad that it's coming down to a time where baptizing people is an offense to others that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but you know what? Many people were inspired. Many people gave their lives to the Lord uh, in that experience. And, um, you know, um, many people are rising up in the Vancouver community to preach the gospel to those who want to hear the gospel. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's a move in Canada of people rising up to preach the gospel. Whether you're a formal, pre you know, street preacher, we are all called to preach the gospel. Amen. But Amen. fear is a real thing. Like, this is the question I want to know from, I think you're one of the bravest people I know out there. What is your antidote for overcoming fear in sharing the gospel? It's an experience. You know, when you know that God is real, um, that, that changes everything. And, you know, when you, you've actually encountered the Lord, whether in dream or, or just heard his voice in, in, in your spirit, um, he gives you the, the passion to move forward despite all the odds. And so, you know, the, the message I believe is exactly what Christ said in Mark chapter 1. Um, uh, or, or, or rather, yeah, Mark chapter one seventeen it says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He'll give you the DNA to go out there and he'll give you the strength to deny yourself, pick up your cross. And why do we deny ourselves? Is because we know that 
that we're going to be with Christ and he's coming. And when you have that experience, uh, he gives you that courage by the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm, I'm going to give you power to be my witnesses, my martyrs on this world. And so, you know, just knowing, uh, just having a real relationship with God helps you to see that you don't have to be afraid of the things of the world. You don't have to hold on to anything because uh, God has something better in store for you. So that that just fuels me to, yeah. to keep serving him uh, regardless of the odds. Well, I, I see that in you. I see this uh, confidence, first of all, in the gospel. You are fully convinced of it. And when we're fully convinced of the gospel, that actually changes people's lives, right? Amen. That gives us courage. But you're also compassionate, David. And I just want to encourage you that I see the truth. You do this because you love people. And, and you've experienced Christ's move in your own life. Is that what keeps you going? Do you have some favorite stories of what you see God doing in Canada? <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, it's it's amazing. The Bible says the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. Um, when I gave my life to the Lord, like I said before, I, I came from a broken place. And uh, just to know that God loved me and, and was willing to forgive me through Christ, that, that gave me a compassion for others. The Bible says those who are forgiven much love much. And um, yeah. I'm not perfect, but, but God's love just compels me to reach people like myself and and pretty much any person in any community, because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Um, you know, uh, when I see, uh, when I when I preach on the streets and I, I I notice people standing and listening, I I see the impact of the gospel. I see the tears coming down their eyes, and you know when they come forward and ask me questions, I realize that all of us are just looking for the answers. We're looking for love. We're looking for hope we're looking for forgiveness every every person no matter what religion or background and when the gospel is presented it meets that need and i've seen with my own eyes people get delivered from demons people get healed on the spot people being transformed people coming from all walks of life saying i'm ready to give my life to the lord and that's that's the power of the holy spirit the power of the gospel moving it has nothing to do with me it's simply that uh, the god's word is true it never comes back void and uh God is God is saving, and and right now, I mean, we're seeing communities uh, all around Canada uh, just rising up in big numbers. Um, you know, not 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 millions, but but uh, large groups of people ready to say, you know what, I I don't want to live by the status quo anymore. I I, I don't want to just sit in church and just just kind of go through motions. I actually want to be a part of the gospel. I want to be a part of impacting my community. I'm seeing that, and uh, it's exciting, very exciting. Yeah. Well, that's what Jesus came to, to, to show us, not only, you know, who he was, but that he was our model. Like, this is how we can live. We can experience the miraculous. And, and I, too, have seen it, David, and I know that God is doing powerful things across our nation. There is a fresh move of God. And what would you say to our viewers who are watching? They go, I'm not a street preacher. I, I just have trouble sharing my faith. Like, what do, what do I do? I want to experience more in my Christian life. What would you say to them? Well, you don't have to be a street preacher to, to be impactful in, in, in your community or wherever you at you are, because we all have a sphere of influence. Uh, you, you have friends, relatives, associates, neighbors, strangers in your sphere, and that uh, is what God has called you uh, uh, or put a place you to uh, be a part of. And um, I, I guess sometimes in life we, we, don't, we don't see the big picture or it seems God is distant because everything around us is saying the opposite. And, uh, you, you know, many may not know where to start um, and not, may not know where to go. But um, what I would say to that person is, um, uh, first, just be honest with yourself and ask yourself, what are you really looking for? And I, I would say the best place to look is, is just open up the Bible and, and, and just read it. Um, allow your thoughts to just, you know, in your mind to wrestle with that. And, and, and I believe that as you read the word, it's, it's going to give you the answers you're looking for and point you to the reality of a God. And that reality is there. That voice is there. It's just been very, it, it's just been dimmed down because of the other voices in this world. So when you just get away and just ask yourself these tough questions, read the word, God is going to show you his, his truth and, and just pray, just seek the Lord, ask him to show himself. And every time I've always told people to do that, or I've done that myself. 
God has always made his voice and his presence very known, whether it's in the experiences of life. People will come to me and, 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 and say certain things I needed to hear. And, and so that's what I would say. And, and the moment you hear that voice uh, and you discover the reality of God in your life, um, God is going to make it crystal clear. He's going to, he's going to show you the people around you and, and you're going to, you're going to be able to, you don't have to be me. You don't have to be a, a pastor, but you're going to have a story to shell, share with the people that are near to you. And that story is very important. You are very important. That's why you're here. I, I remember my, uh, you know, a family member who was born out of wedlock. One day he questioned himself, like, you know, why am I here? And then all of a sudden he came up with this good answer. He said, you know what? If God didn't want me here, I wouldn't have been here. You're on this earth for a reason. That's why you're here, and and you have a purpose, yeah. and um, that purpose is right in front of you. It's right in front of you. That's it. That is it. Thank you, David. Um, thank you yeah. for what you're doing. Thank you for your obedience and your bravery. Thank you for your example. If you want to know more about David Lynn, go to 700club.ca. We'll have all the information there. And you need some courage. You need a boost of bravery watch David and get on with doing the things Jesus tells you to do because there's nothing but joy in store for you. Thanks, David. So appreciate you. No problem. God bless you.